I am in danger nowhere in the world. I am in danger nowhere in the world. I am in danger nowhere in the world. What is the world? What is the world the world is false perception it is born of error let us not rest content until the world has joined until the world has joined our changed perception let us not be satisfied until forgiveness has been made complete. And let us not attempt to change our function. We must save the world. We must save the world. For we who made it must behold it through the eyes of Christ. That what was made to die be restored to everlasting life. I am in danger nowhere in the world. I am in danger nowhere in the world. I Thank you all so much for joining me in this safe world. I am in danger nowhere in the world. Hello, and I'm Willie from the Ozarks, and we're ready for Lesson 244 and A Course in Miracles workbook for students. We're reading from the original edition here on Friday, September the 1st of 2023. Today, uh, I am in danger nowhere in the world. Your son is safe wherever he may be. For you are there with him. He need but call upon your name, and he will recollect his safety and your love, for they are one. Now, have, are you doing that when you feel a little bit of apprehension, a little, little timid, timidity, a little fear, a little anxiousness, a little foreboding, not sure that things are safe, secure, that you're going to be happy, that all is well? Can you do that? Can you say, your son is safe wherever he may be? For you are there with him. He need but call upon your name, and he will recollect his safety and your love, for they are one. Are you calling on the name of God when you have all those foreboding feelings? How can he fear or doubt or fail to know he cannot suffer, be endangered or experience unhappiness when he belongs to you? Beloved and loving, in the safety of your fatherly embrace. And there we are in truth. No storms can come into the hallowed heaven, the hallowed haven of our home. In God are we secure. For what can come to threaten God himself or make afraid what will forever be a part of him. So we're part of God. And as such, we don't have nothing to worry about. <laughs> we, we, but, but we can believe we do. And we can make a world where, where, where things seem to come to bother us and to even kill us. But we're, we're learning more and more that death's not an end and that everybody who seems to die doesn't want to come back anyway. <laughs> so it's like, it's like we can abide in heaven now. We don't have to die to get there. We can begin to be there now. And, that's how, and we do that by, turn, by, how does he say it? I, um, he need but call upon your name, and he will recollect his safety and your love, for they are one. <laughs> so let's be sure to do that. And um, okay, well let's go. Let's oh, let's read our associated reading. What is the world? The world is false perception. It is born of error and has not left its source. It will remain no longer than the thought which gave it birth is cherished. When the thought of separation has been changed to one of true forgiveness, will the world be seen in quite another light? 
and one which leads to truth, where all the world must disappear and all its errors vanish. Now its source has gone and its effects are gone as well. The world was made as an attack on God. It symbolizes fear. And what is fear except love's absence? Thus the world was meant to be a place where God could enter not and where his son could be apart from him. Here was perception born, for knowledge could not cause such insane thoughts. But eyes deceive and ears hear falsely. Now mistakes become quite possible, for certainty has gone. The mechanisms of illusion have been born instead, and now they go to find what has been given them to seek. Their aim is to fulfill the purpose which the world was made to witness and make real. They see in its illusions but a solid base where truth exists, upheld apart from lies, yet everything that they report is but illusion, which is kept apart from truth. As sight was made to lead away from truth, it can be redirected, Sounds become the call of God, and all perception can be given a new purpose by the one whom God appointed Savior to the world. Follow his light and see the world as he beholds it. Look at things through the Holy Spirit's eyes when you feel a little foreboding, a little anxiety. Follow his light and see the world as he beholds it. Hear his voice alone in all that speaks to you. And let him give you peace and certainty which you have thrown away. But heaven has preserved for you in him. Let us not rest content until the world has joined our changed perception. Let us not be satisfied until forgiveness has been made complete. And let us not attempt to change our function. We must save the world. For we who made it must behold it through the eyes of Christ. That what was made to die be restored to everlasting life. And I, um, let's go look in our text reading. Uh, we're going to finish uh, the next, this section we're in the middle of uh, in chapter 25, The Remedy, section 9, The Principle of Salvation. And let's pick up at the last sentence of paragraph 70. We read paragraph 71 last week, or yesterday. <laughs> uh, while you're turning there, what on earth is going on today? Well, uh, bring your manners to work day. Well, you ought to be mannerly wherever you go, don't you think? That's just being treating your neighbor as yourself, the way you want to be treated. Building a code staff appreciation day. Building and code staff appreciation day. <laughs> I'm in the building trade. <laughs> it's nice for us to appreciate our, our inspectors and send out a good vibe to them. They have a good vibe to you. <laughs> It can work the other way in a lot of guys' minds. Uh, Chicken Boy Day, and that's a big statue that put up about 10 years ago in Highland Park District of L.A., <laughs> the Chicken Boy. Emma M. Nutt Day, and she was the first female telephone operator. She started to work on September 1st, 1878, back when they had little switchboards and you'd plug in the wires where you wanted people to be communicating with each other. Ginger... Ginger Cat Appreciation Day. Uh, and ginger cats are not a specific breed, but those that are colored, that ginger color. Uh, a light tan gold. National Cherry Popover Day, and we'll talk about another ch cherry here in a moment. National College Colors Day. What were the c colors of your college? National Doodle Day. Do a little doodling. <laughs> you know, just playing with paper and pen. National Food Bank Day, good day to donate some food to someone. National Lazy Moms Day, well, there you go, a day to sit back and, and relax. National No Rhyme, No Reason Day. <laughs> a lot of people live their life with no rhyme and no reason, but we want to start using reason for sure. Rhyme, that might be uh, uh, take it or leave it. But reason, we want to be reasonable. National Tofu Day. And I might mention in, in national, all of our lessons in part two are in, in ten syllables. Or in, as we get further into the, the, tit the titles only, which is the affirmation of the day that we're supposed to be saying. As we get further into the book, they'll be in sets of 20. And then at the very end, it'll be in sets of three. Or sets of 30. 
but but still 10 10 syllables 20 syllables and 30 syllables which i i just think that's kind of amazing <laughs> but anyway just so that you know that that's there uh, national tofu day now tofu is made from soybeans which is the in the genus glycine and the most common is the uh, species max there are 2500 either species or cultivars of uh, to, of uh, soybean soybean to make tofu you take soybeans uh, blend them up in water uh, cook and then coagulate with either calcium or magnesium. There might be other things you can coagulate them with. And then you press the juices out, and you get that firm tofu. Uh, nice for people that, that are on vegan diets that like, you know, it gets you a lot of high-protein food there. National Wear Teal Day, Pink Cadillac Day, Save Japan's Dolphin Days, and a lot of people have probably heard about that. I think it's called the Taiji Cove, and it's the dolphin hunt that starts about this time of year every year. Uh, toy Tips Executive Toy Test Day. Uh, Waddle Day. Waddle Day is an Australian um, holiday that, that kind of denotes the acacia trees are all in bloom. There's like 160 different acacia species, but acacia is of the acacia genus. And the ones that most common in Australia that flowers about right now is the Pyanintha. I think that's how to pronounce it. And anyway, that's the that, a wattle, tree, wattle, wattle tree. They're all in bloom. This is kind of marks the beginning of spring, even though spring in the southern hemisphere begins just like our fall um, equinox, which is generally about the 21st of the month of September. But it'll be spring for them where it'll be coming into winter for us, fall. Uh, World Letter Writing Day. And good day to write a letter to somebody. And then, uh, and then I also have got a Life After Life NDE. And this is the Trisha Barker NDE story. And you can go to her website, uh, Tr TrishaBarkerNDE.com. Anyway, her video is 17 minutes and 22 seconds. It's titled, Woman Dies, Shown How to Manifest Large Sums of Money. And I almost didn't read it because of the title. Uh, it seemed like that was a little below where we're headed, trying to, but you know, we're, we're all, we live in an abundant universe, and if you know what to do, you can get all the money you want. You'll, you're, that's a promise. God will take care of you, is what I'm basically saying. You just need to have your, line, your thoughts in alignment, just like your health is a result of your alignment. And so is your, your, your monetary health. Uh, some, some ideas that she came back with, which I really liked some of these little statements, be kind, ask creator, visualize what you want, remind them to go to nature. That was one of her first realizations they told her. Remind people, go to nature. Uh, bless everyone. Uh, look at their hearts, not just their outer appearance. Love is all that matters. Be like a child. Walk everyone home. I thought that was a nice way to look at your friends who were walking each other home to heaven. You can always feel better by thinking about God. And she was an agnostic when she started her, uh, near, when she entered heaven. She met her grandpa there and had a great uh, visit and he even drove his old, his old truck. It was all restored up there. Okay, let's see. Now, the sour cherry that I want to read about in edible landscaping is North Star Dwarf Sour Cherry. North Star is a sour Morello-type cherry that's very tasty right off the tree. Fruits are large and the stones small and easily removed. Tree is a genetic dwarf, grows less than 10 feet tall and self-fertile. Excellent for home gardens. Zones 5 through 8. Well, that's your North Star Dwarf Sour Cherry. And even though it's a sour cherry, sounds like it's pretty good eating right off the... But you, once you put some, some sweetener in, you can make a nice pie out of sour cherries. Okay, now we're going to start in paragraph 70, the last sentence in uh, chapter 25. Love is not understandable to sinners because they think that justice is split off from love and stands for something else. 71. And thus is love perceived as weak and vengeance strong. For love has lost when judgment left its side and is too weak to save from punishment. 
But vengeance without love has gained in strength by being separate and apart from love. And what but vengeance now can help and save while love stands feebly by with helpless hands, bereft of justice and vitality, and powerless to save? What can love ask of you who think that all of this is true? Could he in justice and in love believe in your confusion you have much to give? Could he in justice and in love believe in your confusion you have much to give? You are not asked to trust him far. No further than what you see he offers you, and what you recognize you could not give yourself. You don't have to go far to trust. Just what are the obvious things that if you surrender to God becomes yours? In God, in 72, in God's own justice, does he recognize all you deserve, but understands as well that you cannot accept it for yourself? This would be the Holy Spirit. In God's own justice, does God or the Holy Spirit recognize all you deserve, but understands as well that you cannot accept it for yourself? We kind of closed ourselves in when we believe in time and space and so many limitations that we don't understand that we're the limitless uh, chip off the old block. Uh, <laughs> just a funny way of thinking about it. But, you know, part of God. We're, we have that creative potential. We share God's glory, His creativeness. And it is His special function to hold out to you the gifts the innocent deserve. And everyone that you accept brings joy to Him as well as you. He knows that heaven is richer made by each one you accept. And God rejoices as his son receives what loving justice knows to be his due. For love and justice are not different. Because they are the same, does mercy stand at God's right hand and give the Son of God the power to forgive himself of sins? So love and mercy are, are one. Don't think of, or excuse me, or love and mercy, but love and justice. Don't think of love of, of justice as being harsh and and demanding and vengeful and retaliative for attacking or you know you know giving someone their just due in a in an attacking way that's not justice it's not divine justice divine justice just knows that that you're you're innocent and always have been you're holy and always will be to him who merits anything how can it be that anything be kept from him for that would be injustice and unfair indeed to all the holiness that is in him, however much he recognize it not. God knows of no injustice. He would not allow his son be judged by those who seek his death and could not see his worth at all. What honest witnesses could they call forth to speak on his behalf and who would come to plead for him and not against his life? No justice would be given him by you. Yet God ensured that justice would be done unto the son he loves and would protect from all unfairness you might seek to offer, believing vengeance is his proper due. As specialness cares not who pays the cost of sin, so it be paid, the Holy Spirit heeds not who looks on innocence at last, provided it is seen and recognized. For just one witness is enough if he sees truly, Simple justice asks no more of each one. Uh, asks no. Simple justice asks no more than just one witness is enough if he sees truly. Simple justice asks no more of each one. Does the Holy Spirit ask if he will be that one, so justice may return to love and there be satisfied? Each special function he allots is but for this that each one learned that love and justice are not separate, and both are strengthened by their union with each other. Without love is justice prejudiced and weak, and love without justice is impossible. For love is fair and cannot chasten without cause. What cause can be to warrant an attack upon the innocent? In justice, then, does love correct mistakes, but not in vengeance, for that would be unjust to innocence. 75. You can be perfect witness to the power of love and justice if you understand it is impossible the Son of God could merit vengeance. 
You need not perceive in every circumstance that this is true, nor need you look to your experience within the world, which is but shadows of all that is really happening within yourself. The understanding which you need comes not of you, but from a larger self, so great and holy that he could not doubt his innocence. Your special function is a call to him that he may smile on you whose sinlessness he shares. His understanding will be yours. And so the Holy Spirit's special function has been fulfilled. God's Son has found a witness unto his sinlessness and not his sin. How little need you give the Holy Spirit that simple justice may be given you. 76. Without impartiality, there is no justice. Without impartiality, there is no justice. How can specialness be just? Judge not because you cannot, not because you're a miserable sinner too. How can the special really understand that justice is the same for everyone? To take from one to give another must be an injustice to them both, since they are equal in the Holy Spirit's sight. Their father gave the same inheritance to both. Who would have more or less is not aware that he has everything. He is no judge of what must be another's due, because he thinks he is deprived, and so must he be envious and try to take away from whom he judges. He is not impartial and cannot fairly see another's rights, because his own have been obscured to him. And the last paragraph of this section, 77, you have the right to all the universe, to perfect peace, complete deliverance from all effects of sin, and to the life eternal, joyous, and complete in every way, as God appointed for his holy Son. Shall we read that one again? You have the right to all the universe, to perfect peace, complete deliverance from all effects of sin, and to the life eternal, joyous, and complete in every way, as God appointed for his holy Son. This is the only justice heaven knows and all the Holy Spirit brings to earth. Your special function shows you nothing else but perfect justice can prevail for you. And you are safe from vengeance in all forms. The world deceives, but it cannot replace God's justice with a version of its own. For only love is just and can perceive what justice must accord the Son of God. Let love decide and never fear that you in your unfairness will deprive yourself of what's, what God's justice has allotted you. That last sentence, two or two again. For only love is just and can perceive what justice must accord the Son of God. Let love decide and never fear that you in your unfairness will deprive yourself of what God's justice has allotted you. In other words, we need to learn to think of ourselves a whole lot more um, empowering or, or wonderful or grand as, than miserable sinners. <laughs> I am in danger nowhere in the world. Your son is safe wherever he may be, for you are there with him. This is our lesson 244. I am in danger nowhere in the world. Your son is safe wherever he may be, for you are there with him. He need but call upon your name, and he will recollect his safety and your love, for they are one. How can he fear or doubt or fail to know he cannot suffer, be endangered or experience unhappiness, when he belongs to you, beloved and loving, in the safety of your fatherly embrace? And there we are in truth. No storms can come into the hallowed haven of our home. In God are we secure. For what can come to threaten God himself or make afraid what will forever be a part of him. And do the best you can at bringing that idea to your mind throughout the day. Try to aim for the top of every hour. Try to remind yourself, I am in danger nowhere in the world. And certainly if you feel any apprehension or uh, you know, foreboding or anger, upsetness, discouragement, fear of any sort, say, I'm in danger nowhere in the world. And then be sure to take your longer practice, you know, meditation morning and evening. And 
I feel like I need to just say that uh, we want to like keep keep studying these ideas in the text and in the workbook to where they become integrated with everything you do. And I would encourage you to keep reading and keep doing your studies each year even until you really feel like you've got it. You know, if you just go through it one year and if that's all you need to do, well, then at least you get one year and that may give you complete enlightenment. But with me, I've been doing it for a number of years now and I, I keep getting more out of it. And I want to try to get to where I really think all of my ideas according to the precepts that are in this book because I see how much they help me. I am in danger nowhere in the world. I am in danger nowhere in the world. What is the world? What is the world? The world is false perception. It is born of error. Let us not rest content until the world has joined, until the world has joined our changed perception. And let us not be satisfied until forgiveness has been made complete, and let us not attempt to change our function. We must save the world, we must save the world, for we who made it must behold it through the eyes of Christ, that what was made to die be restored to everlasting life. I am in danger. danger nowhere in the world and if you feel like you are stop immediately as soon as you're aware of it and be aware of your loss of peace realize that you have made a thought that God wouldn't think and ask for help call on him and that's an, that's the prayer that you'll always have answered that's the miracle the answer will be the miracle I am in danger nowhere in the world